Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Technical Analysis Webinar. My name is Troy. I'm a Senior Account Manager with Avatrade. I'll be presenting today. Uh, as we get going, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, just type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. All right, great. I've got enough responses. Looks like we're up and running fine. Thank you. Uh, as always, as we get going, some things to keep in mind. One is, uh, obviously, no one trade is guaranteed to profit. I think we all understand that. There's risk involved uh, with each and every trade that you take. Uh, that's why, in, in one way or another, you should be managing risk in a way that makes sense for you, whether you're using stop loss marks, uh, maybe you're using the Ava Protect feature that's available on our mobile app, Ava Trade Go, and also available on our web trader. You'll actually find a lot of nice risk management features in the order window when using uh, our web trader and, and Ava Trade Go mobile app. Uh, the, the order window acts as a trade calculator for you, calculates your potential profit, your potential loss as you put your stop loss and take profit prices. Uh, calculates your margin requirement, et cetera. And, and obviously, as I mentioned, it has the ABBA Protect feature as well uh, on gold, silver, and FX pairing. So it makes it quite a bit easier to manage risk uh, when you use our web trader and ABBA Trade Go mobile app. Uh, now, with that said, uh, with, with each trade having risk, obviously the other side of that is each trade has a good potential for profits as well, which is uh, why we're all here. So what we'll do from an educational perspective as we go through the webinar, uh, not to be taken as financial advisement, but from an educational perspective, we'll go through some ideas and concepts uh, with how technical analysis can hopefully improve upon uh, your results in terms of going after those potential profits. And you'd be amazed, just small minor uh, improvements in your entry points and exit points can make a huge difference in terms of your win percentage and your overall PL. Uh, you know, just going from a 40% uh, maybe uh, or 45% win percentage to a 50% win percentage can be the difference between losing and winning in terms of the overall PL. And uh, a lot of times, if you set things up with, with a a risk reward ratio that's uh, maybe advantageous to you, a 50% win percentage can be very, very good for PL. And so we'll get into some of those ideas and concepts as we look at the live charts. And at the same time, we'll, we'll be looking a little bit at the fundamental situation as well. So you can get an idea of maybe there's a preference in terms of what direction you prefer to trade on certain instruments based on the fundamental sentiment that's going on right now. Uh, in general, what is technical analysis? Real quick, basically, it's just looking at the charts, the historical movements on what we call candlestick charts, typically, uh, and trying to find patterns that are predictable. And so that, that's what technical analysis is all about, trying to predict which way the movements might go based on uh, past movements. And while future movements uh, are not guaranteed to mimic past movements. Uh, this is what technical analysis is about, looking at uh, hopefully the probability of a movement occurring, not not the guarantee of a movement, but the probability of a movement. And, and if you look at certain price levels and you identify statistics as to will it reverse, will it break through, if it breaks through, will it keep moving, uh, those sorts of things help to improve upon many times your win percentage and your PL uh, at the end of the day. And so we tend to lean on manual methods of, the, of this type of analysis, meaning we draw our own lines uh, based on the charts. We draw our own uh, trend lines, support levels, resistance levels, uh, ranging movements. We identify those manually and uh, this allows you to understand what the indicators are actually looking at. If you do choose to use indicators eventually, you can read what the indicators are reading and actually make an informed decision rather than blindly following an indicator that tells you buy now or sell now 
Uh, if a market's overbought or oversold, you have a, a better technical idea as to why the indicator might be telling you that. And, and then you can make a more informed decision as whether to trust a particular signal from an indicator. So uh, that's the direction we're going, some manual technical analysis. If you have any questions, you want to give any input, please do so at any time. I'm happy to share information or to answer questions as we go along. So uh, real quick, even though today's focus is technical analysis, I like to get a, a quick idea of, well, what's the fundamental sentiment right now? And, and it doesn't take long. We can look at some headlines that I pulled up here just before we started. Uh, China buyers reemerge, patient fed saps dollar. Okay, well, that sounds positive if you unwrap that headline. Uh, China buyers reemerge. Okay, if you read the article, it tells you about the fact that China's cracked down with some uh, regulatory crackdowns that they've been doing, kind of scared some folks as they were looking to crack down, not just on the crypto industry, but also on the tech industry. And uh, there was a bit of a sell-off on some of the stocks out of China. Well, that uh, has kind of calmed as uh, China came back and, and reassured folks that they're not going to do anything to damage these companies. And, uh, and so the buyers, they say, have reemerged. The fear has kind of waned. Uh, and when they say patient Fed saps dollar, they're talking about uh, the, the Fed in the U.S. And they're talking about the U.S. dollar in particular is starting to weaken again which actually is good for oil, for the stocks, for the indices, et cetera. The fact that the Fed was kind of dovish with their statements about whether or not they would taper off the bond buying program, the stimulus measures that they've had in place through the pandemic. And so uh, being dovish means that they're not coming out and saying, hey, we're going to cut the stimulus measures down. They did not say that. They said the opposite. We're going to be very patient. The economy's not where we want it to be yet. It's doing good, but not good enough. And so Wall Street loves that. And, and not just Wall Street, but London and all the other stock exchanges around the world like the idea that the U.S. is not going to, at least any time eminent, cut back on stimulus measures. They will keep them in place. And so this is basically a positive sentiment headline all around in China, in the U.S., and really globally. Then we take a look, and by the way, that helped gold spike back up as well, because uh, what's going to weaken the U.S. dollar, continued stimulus, then causes inflation of the U.S. dollar, and people rush to gold as a as a inflationary safe haven. And so uh, up went gold again off off of a pretty major support level that I'll show you in in a little bit. Uh, here's another headline: as Fed tiptoes around tapering. That's what we just talked about. Tapering is tapering off the stimulus measures, the bond buying program. They're tiptoeing around it, meaning they're not going to taper yet. Uh, investors looked at Jackson Hole meeting for clarity. Jackson Hole is a meeting uh, of bank uh, professionals that will be next month. And so that's the focus now that the Fed says, hey, we're not planning to cut any measures. Well, if the banking industry comes out and says, yeah, we're going to start raising interest rates, uh, that would be the next thing that could crash gold and crash the markets down. Uh, if there's fear that interest rates and bank policy could uh, start to eliminate the ultra low interest rates, et cetera. Uh, but that's not till next month. But that's ahead. That's what folks are looking at next, really. For, for getting a major idea about uh, economic policy moving forward. And so uh, what will the central banks do in terms of uh, the ultra low interest rates? We're talking August 26th and 28th. So that's about a month away before uh, that would occur. So there's plenty of time between now and then for uh, you know the, the happiness about continued stimulus to push markets up maybe, and uh, to potentially weaken the U.S. dollar further. Uh, Eurozone sentiment hits record high in July. Uh, peak may be near. Okay, it's the same story. And now, now European Union, hey, sentiment's high. Everybody's happy again, right? Uh, and, but with an eye on the fact that, hey, the peak might be near. It won't take much to cause a sell-off is what that means. 
the wrong words out of the Fed in the U.S., the wrong words uh, out of that banking conference next month. Uh, boom, you could see the fear come back and, and down would go the indices and stocks, down would go gold as the U.S. dollar strengthens, etc. The opposite of that is happening right now. Okay, the fear has disappeared. We see the volatility index here is down almost 4%. U.S. dollar is down a third of a percent. Uh, futures are green. It's the opposite of what we saw earlier in the week. It looks like rebound territory from all the drop downs that occurred, that had, ha have occurred this week. And so uh, positive sentiment right now, Eurozone, positive sentiment out of uh, Asia, positive sentiment out of the U.S., weakening U.S. dollar, uh, volatility down. That's the sentiment right now. We, we can see that within five minutes of looking at headlines. Okay. Earlier today, we, we had, a, as we already saw, some positive news come out of the European Union. We see uh, German unemployment change much better than expected, a drop of 91,000 in terms of unemployment numbers. So listen, sentiment is positive right now. We've got some big numbers coming out of the U.S. later today. Okay, that's 8.30 a.m. New York time. Okay, they're, they're at uh, an offset five hours behind London, okay? So adjust to your GMT offset. This is 8.30 a.m. New York time. Uh, U.S. GDP numbers will be coming out. Also, jobless claims will be coming out. And, and uh, you know, both of those being looked at as high-level announcements, three stars, high volatility expected from those numbers. If those numbers show, you know, positive for the U.S. economy, you could see more positive sentiment and up the markets might go further. OK, uh, so we have to keep an eye if these numbers uh, exceed expectations or if they miss. Now, if, what happens if GDP comes in way above expectation? Well, then inflation fears hit again. Right. And there could be a bit of a sell off on the market. So it's interesting how this works. Uh, good numbers bring the market up, too good of numbers can actually bring the market down with inflation fears. So uh, it's a touchy time. You want to have some risk management built into your trades in case there's a large market reversal. Uh, but right now, the sentiment is positive, okay, with some large announcements coming later today that could shake things up a bit. All right, so uh, I mentioned our award-winning mobile app. I mentioned our uh, web trader platform that makes it easy to do risk management with Ava Protect and with the order window acting as a trade calculator, etc. If you want to use our Ava Trade Go mobile app, it's found here on our website, trading platforms, Ava Trade Go. There it is. It's in the major app stores. You can just keyword search in your app store as well and get it on your mobile device. You see Ava Protect, you see the take profit stop loss features. They will calculate your risk for you as you program the prices, your potential profit as well. Uh, margin requirement is right there under your trade size. It tells you before you buy or sell. Everything's done for you in terms of those things, uh, making your risk management easier. Also, from a mobile device, from a Mac, from your PC, you can log into our web trader from here. So if you don't want to use the mobile app, you can, with your mobile device or any device, log in from our main website and you'll be in this platform, our web trader. And it works for mobile, works from PC, from Mac, et cetera. Uh, and the order window is the same, lots of nice features. There's actually extra features in our web trader. If you go to Trading Central, you could get free signals, free, free fundamental analysis done for you through Trading Central. So you've got free signals here uh, coming in at cryptocurrencies on uh, major FX pairings, etc. Okay, the signals are outlined for you, the expected breakout move, uh, this, the ideology behind it with what indicator was used, the price levels, everything's outlined for you in these signals, uh, technical analysis done for you. Okay, it's a premium service for free on, on all of our live accounts. Okay, uh, let's, let's go ahead and jump on the MT4 platform and take a look at what's happening. Uh, I see some major green candles. This, the DAX 30 we were looking at as we ended the last webinar. And we said, wow, it was on a nice support level. We drew this line in the last webinar and said, it's above that support level. And, and we said, you know what? You could buy on this, even though at the time the sentiment was negative. 
we said, okay, put your stop loss just below the support level. And you could bank on buying on a bounce up off of this support level. And uh, wow, it bounced nice, huh? So that was a nice move. We also talked about uh, setting up a sell stop below that support level. A sell stop is a pending order uh, that only opens if the price drops to the to the entry price that you program, and then it would sell from that price. So because the price was just above the support and we had all that negative sentiment, we said, okay, don't sell now because it already bounced up off the support level a little bit. Sell if it breaks the support level. And so we said, program a sell stop down here if it breaks the support. Well, guess what? It didn't break it. And so that trade didn't have to be a losing trade. That's the, the idea of combining your fundamental analysis with your technical. The, the, the fundamentals said sell, but the technical said, nah, it's, it, it reached the support level and it's bouncing a little. Why sell now? So the only way to sell in that situation would have been if it broke the support, then it would confirm a strong downtrend again, and then it would trigger your sell stop. Well, the sell stop never triggered, and the, the, the technical buy off of the support level was the winner. Okay, and, and we simulated doing both, buying off the support because it didn't break it, and preparing a sell stop below the support in case that fundamental fear that was on the market that day allowed the support level to break, it would have triggered the sell. OK, we 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 successfully avoided selling in what ended up being a reversal because we didn't sell, wouldn't have sold unless it broke the support. And, and it was a successful technical buy off of the support level. Why do I call it a technical buy? Because it was going against the fundamental news. If you bought, it was purely because of the technical analysis showing that, hey, it's just above a support level. And so a technical trader would say, OK, buy. I don't care what the fundamental analysis says. And that ended up working. Now, uh, the fundamentals today would have said, if this movement breaks above this resistance level, resistance, 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 we saw from this morning, the fear was gone, the headlines were positive. So if we go back just one, two, three, four hours, we saw this rush up to the resistance and it broke through. So what kind of pending order would have bought had you put a pending order to buy right up here above that resistance. When it broke the resistance, that was confirmation of a strong uptrend. And so you didn't have to guess whether there was an uptrend. It broke through. That would have triggered a buy with what kind of pending order? And you'd be in profit now on the continued momentum after it broke the resistance. Correct, that's a buy stop pending order. Just like we simulated preparing a sell stop down here in case it would have broke under the support, which it did not. Uh, we're saying you could have had a buy stop pending order above the resistance in case it broke through the resistance because that was the direction of the fundamental news. Ruben, correct, buy stop. Uh, and, and look how well that would have worked. Those are called breakthrough candles in technical analysis. A breakthrough candle is a candle that breaks through the resistance and, and, and usually once that candle breaks through the resistance, you have continued momentum in that direction. And that's exactly what happened here. So some of you would say, why would I use a buy stop? Why would I program to wait and buy from a higher price? It's counterintuitive, right? You usually want to buy from a low price. But the, the idea is by waiting to buy from the higher price, you're confirming an uptrend because in this case, it broke through the resistance and then you buy because now you say ah it broke the resistance for sure it's a strong uptrend now i buy and why would you prepare the buy stop here because the sentiment was positive we saw the headlines three four hours ago five hours ago from early this morning we saw that the volatility index was down the futures were green we saw all the headlines about china positive headlines so prepare your buy stops if it breaks the resistance you're in and that's exactly what happened here, okay? Now the question is, what do I do now? That's all well and good, but I didn't do that maybe. So what do I do next? You know, hindsight's 2020. It's great that I'm pointing out to you that, hey, you should have had a buy stop here. It would have been a great move. Okay, great. What do I do now uh, that the movement already broke the resistance and went up to the next one? Okay, so here's the next resistance, right? Resistance, resistance, resistance. 
let's it, it's exactly on that resistance level right same idea isn't it if it breaks the resistance you can buy and then take your profit at the next resistance level okay it's that simple so i could put another buy stop at 15000 uh 635 maybe something just above the resistance say this price level right here would be mean that the resistance broke again that 16639 640 so if it breaks through this resistance here then perhaps it does the same thing and rises to the next one okay you see the idea now what would a purely technical trader do besides prepare a buy here it's on the resistance right we see the resistance level right here on the 30 minute candles it was an old support support and up and then a breakthrough candle and it drops a sell stop would have been good here below this support breakthrough and it drops okay then it becomes resistance classic example of a support level once broken becoming resistance we see support and up breakthrough candle it becomes resistance 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 okay you see that so uh now we're at the resistance level some say i don't like to trade against the fundamental news the fundamental news says this should break the resistance and keep rising the technical trader would say i like this entry point it's on a resistance level let me sell okay so let's first prepare the technical breakthrough trade fifteen thousand six uh 40 would be above that resistance enough that it that it broke through so we go to the dax and we say new order whatever trade size makes sense for your account uh again if you're using a web trader to calculate your risk with whatever trade size and stop loss mark that you put uh pending order buy stop if this breaks through and hits a price uh, 15,640, and we might want to stop loss then just back below a little ways, 15,615, 25 points down, and uh, take profit would be just before this resistance up here. So 15,675. And place. Oh, somehow my demo account has lost connection here. Let me try it again. Uh, 15,640, 15,615. Okay, all the numbers are still there. Okay, there we go. Uh, it happens on occasion that uh, for a split second, you don't have connection. Uh, okay, so we've got the pending order in. You see my entry price is right here on where I drew that red line. If it breaks the resistance and hits that price, then perhaps it does the same thing the last time it broke resistance, surge up to the next resistance level. That's waiting for confirmation for a technical breakthrough in the direction that we know the sentiment sentiment is in that direction. Uh, Andres, good question. The the color of my candles on my chart, I have programmed so that if it's a candle that finished higher than it started, it will be green, meaning it's a bullish candle. It was an upward moving time period. If the time period ended lower than it started, then it's a red candle. And you can change those colors. All I have to do is right click, go to properties, and I can change. My background color, I have white. My foreground is black, meaning the writing and the grid is black uh, and gray. My bar up, the upward candles, I picked sea green. That's this color is sea green. Uh, the, the downward moving candles are red, okay? Bull candle, the green color. Bear candle, the red candle. That's it, very simple to set that. Then you can right click and set it as a template. Template, save as. And I saved my template with my name, Troy. So uh, if I put a different template, it'll have different colors. I can go to you know so this uh, template name here. These are there were there by default on the platform, and they have different colors. They have different indicators in. 
I like just a plain chart that looks just like what we're looking at right now. Okay. All right, so uh, we've got this set up for a bullish movement. If it breaks through, uh, we'll see what happens. Yes, we can look at crude oil. Uh, West Texas, Texas Intermediate was requested. Okay, here is an opportunistic pullback in crude oil. Okay, I can look and say, okay, on the one-hour candles, I see a resistance level here, right? This is a, a an area where we see, uh, let me slide that up just a bit, right there. Okay, so we see resistance, 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 and then finally today it broke through and it became support. You see that? Now, if we zoom in, say 15 minute candles, we see it better. Here's that support level, the old resistance level. It had the momentum to break through and go up. Now it pulled back to an opportunistic spot on a day when oil maybe should climb. Why should oil climb? Because the U.S. is talking about continued stimulus for the largest economy in the world. Uh, that creates better demand for oil. It's a very hot summer in many places, which creates energy demand. Uh, we already got through the, the hiccup where, uh, you know, the OPEC plus nations said they were probably going to increase production. So we got through that oil already pulled back quite a bit because of that comment. Now it's looking for reasons to go up. The positive sentiment today is a reason why oil maybe could climb. OK, so if we're looking at an opportunistic entry point, we might say, wow, I might buy on oil here. Obviously, with a trade size, that would make sense. and only if uh, you agree with the information. Now, uh, my stop loss, I could put below that support level. My take profit, I can put at today's high. Okay, I don't even have to break the resistance level of uh, today's high. Just a couple hours ago, it was oil was up at 73 and a quarter. Okay, so I can go after equal risk reward basically here of about equal distance to my take profit and to my loss at my stop loss and i can take profit without having to break through any resistance levels here uh going in the direction of the sentiment today and in order for me to lose it would have to break this support level here that took a lot of momentum to break above it so it would take a lot of momentum to break back below since the sentiment is positive today it would make sense that it might be more likely that oil could come back up to the high it hit just a couple hours ago before it would go down and break this support level to hit our stop loss. OK, so we're playing technical analysis along with the sentiment to, to say, OK, maybe I take a shot at oil spiking back up to today's high. All right. So uh, there's a there's a market move on crude oil. All right, so uh, a lot of the stocks aren't moving because the, the U.S. stock market's not open and our stocks are traded not on the futures market, but uh, the indices are on the futures market. I think it's better we take a look at a major indice. So if you're looking at uh, a, a specific stock that's a U.S. stock, maybe we look at the S&P 500, the NASDAQ. We'll take a look at that to see what you could do r right now with those types of moves. Uh, the specific stocks won't be moving on the charts yet for U.S. stocks. And right now I'm on the MT4 platform. Uh, some of those stocks, maybe the Virgin Atlantic stock uh, is, is on the MT5 platform, which I'm, I don't have open at the moment. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at gold. As we said, gold went rushing up, and we know why. Because the Fed's yesterday quelled the fear that they were going to cut the stimulus measures. They basically said, we're going to continue with all of the stimulus measures, which weakens the U.S. dollar, causes inflation, and so up went gold. Okay, it's that simple as to why gold spiked up. If we go to the four-hour candles, you can see I have a pending order right here. If it, if it would have broken this support level, I'd have been in on a sell with my take profit at the next support level. Had the feds yesterday in the U.S. said uh, that, hey, uh, we're going to cut the bond buying program soon, the opposite move would have occurred. 
Instead of gold flying back up off this support level here, this four hour candle support level, you see how many times it tested it right around 1790. These wicks keep hitting 1790 back up. 1790 back up, 1790 back up. So there's our support level. So strategically, in the last webinar, we set a pending order that if gold broke below 1790, then sell. And again, it's counterintuitive. Sell from a lower point? And, and the answer is yes. If it broke seven, below 1790, then we knew the feds must have said something bullish and, and, and uh, for the U.S. dollar. And gold would have easily broken that support and plunged towards the next support level. Okay. The, in, in fact, the opposite occurred, right? So the market buys from above the support level were winners. We had some market buys when you're near this support level to buy with the market buy and back yourself up with the stop loss below the support level and a pending sell stop to sell. Okay. So the market buys were the winners. The pending sell stop never triggered. Now, I'm going to leave that pending sell stop down there because at some point, gold will come down and break below 1790. And if and when it does, then it'll trigger that sell stop. And, and perhaps the reason it breaks 1790 could be very big news that, that they're cutting bonds eventually, whatever it might be, uh, the bond buying program, I should say, in the U.S. If that happens and it breaks 1790, I've got a trade waiting. Just waiting for that to happen sometime in the future. Okay, now let's get up to pace with the current situation. Hopefully you bought on gold after the Fed had their talk because boy, did it climb. Uh, now what we're looking at is where's the resistance? And if we go to the one day candles, we say it's right here. Okay, right here is the first resistance level we're going to hit. It hit here and dropped, okay? So it's got a ways to go before it hits that resistance. So I could see gold climbing another $15 an ounce approximately before this upward surge reaches a major resistance level. Okay. So there's room for continued climbing without having to break the one day candle resistance with gold. Now, are you getting in late on this surge? If you buy on gold right now, yes, you're getting in a little late if you're a short term trader. If you're a longer term trader, then no, you're not getting in late. What do I mean by that is uh, if your take profit would be way up here. OK, if you expect a movement back up into the 1900s to this resistance point up here, then I have no problem saying, OK, I'll buy on gold now. OK, because the distance to my stop loss to get below this support level. Which is below 1790 is not that far. It's right here. Okay, that gets me below 1790, risking that distance, and my take profit up to here is about two to three times. Okay, to take profit before that resistance up there, I, I'm going to make two to three times what I'm risking if it hits that take profit. So I have no problem buying on an uptrend on a longer term move because the Fed in the US and really around the world are still pouring out the stimulus and ultra low interest rates. So gold could easily reach this 1900 level again for, for a nice potential profit up there. And if I'm wrong and it comes down and hits my stop loss, well, then I'm in on my sell stop. Because if it breaks below 1790 and hits my stop loss on the buy, then, then, I'm, then I'm in on the sell, okay? Uh, for the same reason I would give up on the buy. So uh, the technicals here, it's more of a long-term move on the buy, you might take uh, a smaller trade size and the sell stop down here is a is a shorter term move it break if it breaks that support it's a shorter distance to the take profit here so maybe a little larger trade on the sell stop a little smaller trade on this market buy because your stop loss distance is longer and your take profit distance is longer okay so if my sell stop is i don't know a quarter of a lot my buy here might be 0.1 something like that. Or if my sell is one lot, my sell stop is one full lot, maybe my buy is a quarter of a lot, something like that. Because the this is a longer term move compared to the shorter term move down here, okay? All right, so uh, someone's asking to look at NASDAQ and that has a lot of the tech stocks so I can understand. 
uh, let's look at NASDAQ. And so what do we see today? Let's go to the one hour candles. We see a climb and then some hesitation. Okay, the major resistance level is way up here. As we said, the fear about China hurting the tech uh, industry has kind of waned. And uh, the fear that the FOMC committee or uh, the feds in the US were going to taper off the stimulus right away, that fear is gone now as well. So uh, there's reason to think the NASDAQ could continue to climb right now. The question is, is this the spot you want to get in if you think a buy position is in order uh, in terms of the sentiment, still is this the spot that you want to buy from then is the next question. And you can see it's pulling back a bit right now. So uh, a more opportunistic spot to buy from would be if it drops to a support level, maybe down here, okay? If it drops to this support level here, that might be a spot that you think you would rather buy from, right? Now, uh, if you're more of a longer term trader, you might not be so picky. You might just buy right now, right? And I do see a bit of a support level right here. Okay, this was resistance, resistance, resistance. And now it came down support, 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 but it's really testing that support level. You see, it's trying to break this uh, support level right here. I think it could break and push to the next support level before potentially bouncing, okay? Uh, doesn't mean you can't go with both ideas. I could do a market buy, so I don't miss trading with the sentiment, right? The sentiment's positive right now. Do a market buy, put my stop loss below the next support level. And then I also could say, if it does break the support, I'll buy from the lower point. In this case, then it's a buy limit. If it comes down to this support level, I'll buy from, let's say, 14,955. Okay, 14,955. Stop loss just below this support level then. Uh, 14, uh, let's say, 930. Take profit, maybe at the high up here. 15,000. Okay, so we've got a market move and a pending order for the NASDAQ, both in the direction of the sentiment. And uh, the market move, we can say take profit just before this resistance up here, which is the high that it hit this week. So maybe we say, okay, we'll take profit before that high. And uh, if this movement comes down and hits the support level down here and bounces, we'll be in on two trades. Okay, if it just goes up now, we're going after one trade. If it comes down and then bounces, we're going after two profits. Okay, so uh, the risk reward, it's better if it comes down and opens the pending order and then goes up because then your risk is a lot less and much larger potential profit with the market move because we're less patient in general when you do a market move rather than waiting for a better price uh th this market move has equal risk to to reward basically give or take uh if it triggers the next trade we're almost cheering that it does go down and triggers the the pending order because then we have a better profit potential uh but either way we're in on uh the nasdaq in the direction of the current sentiment okay yeah matthew that could be a pennant setup or a triangle i see what you're saying okay and before we end things today maybe we take a quick look at what bitcoin's doing we looked at bitcoin last week uh and then again this week on tuesday and we saw an important price level at forty thousand just above 40,000 at 40,800 and said, boy, if it hits 40,800, that could be a spot to sell, 40,600. And so we saw the resistance up here, okay, resistance. And we said, boy, if it gets back up there, maybe sell, it hit. And anyone who wanted to could have scalped a profit as it dropped back below 40,000, okay? So it hit this high, 
that we saw Tuesday. And when it hit that high, it tested it, broke through a little bit, and down it went uh, for a nice profit, a nice scalp, about $1,500 to $2,000 uh, dollar drop per coin. Uh, it was a nice little scalp. Uh, we, we, we set up some moves on Tuesday for that pushback if it got near 40,500 or so. Now we're at the same spot. So the question is, well, what do we do? We sell? And the answer is, you certainly could. You could sell now uh, on Bitcoin. And let's do maybe a little smaller move. Okay, sell. And put your stop loss just above the resistance. If it breaks the high of the week, then, then maybe you're out. Let me go to... Uh, Four hour candles, it might be easier. You have to get your stop loss far enough away. So let me uh, let me get this set up. Okay, there's my stop loss above this week's high. And my take profit, maybe at the first major support level, which I see right about there. Okay, this was today's momentum up, uh, or I'm sorry, this week's momentum up. This was a pullback, and this so is an area of support where when it pulled back, it bounced. So uh, about three times the potential profit if it comes to this support level compared to the risk if it breaks today's high. It could easily break today's high. And if it does, what kind of pending order can we put up here that if it hits our stop loss on the sell, then we buy, right? Because then maybe it's on its way to the next resistance level which could be up near 45,000 or 50,000. So a buy stop pending order, if it hits our stop loss, might make sense. So you come here and you say, uh, pending order, buy stop at a price of about 41,500. That would mean it broke back above the resistance. Last time when it hit 41,500, we had pending order to sell. Now, if it breaks through the 40,000 range again, 41,000 uh, range, uh, actually, we had the pending order at 40,500. If it breaks up the 41,500, it broke through that resistance. And that's why the buy stop might make sense because that might trigger uh, a larger uptrend. And now we're looking at where would your stop loss be? Probably back down below that key 40,000 range. So we're talking 39,000. 500 gets you below that 40,000 support level. And your take profit could be, let's say, uh, 45,000. And we can adjust that once we get it in, in uh, place. Okay, so now we've got uh, take profit before this support level over here. You see, this was a run down. This creates some support here. We've got the take profit at 45,000 before the major resistance. and the potential profit is about double what we're risking on that move. Okay. So uh, a couple nice moves there uh, where you could get some potential profits with Bitcoin as well, uh, based on the technical analysis and uh, the movements we've seen recently. Okay. Any questions before we end things today? Yeah, right now it looks like all of the moves we placed are trying to get through the spread. It's normal to start out negative. We'll see how they progress. I'll let these all run uh, through till next week. We'll see where they end up. Uh, maybe we'll look at them Tuesday. Uh, okay, great. You're welcome. Uh, you all have a, a nice rest of the day as well. Good luck with your trading. Keep an eye for big movements on USD indices and U USD currency pairings as those GDP numbers and other uh, announcements that are coming out later today as they come in. You might prepare some similar setups as to what we went through on these instruments uh, on, on some USD uh, currency pairings. Could have some great movements, uh, bounces or breakthroughs. All right, everybody, thanks for joining. Till next time, good luck with your trading.